My wife and I have uh, opened Cafe Strudel in October of 97. I also serve on leadership council for NFIB here in South Carolina. And I want to thank uh, Governor McMaster and Speaker Lucas, uh, who supported the legislation, for being with us today. Uh, they, along with a number of folk, other folks here today across numerous industries, uh, were instrumental in helping small businesses and really all businesses in the state get protection against uh, uh, baseless lawsuits related to COVID-19. Uh, as a small business owner, nothing in almost 25 years of business compares to the impact of COVID to our business. Uh, we lost 90% of our revenue literally overnight, and we had to transition from dine-in to pick up and delivery. We acquired a food truck, all to stay in business and keep the doors open. Uh, but with the help and support of my staff, and loyal customers, and federal, state, and local government assistance, we were able to survive and rebound. I'm sure that I speak for hundreds, maybe thousands of businesses when I say that having to defend against a baseless lawsuit not only would add stress to me and my business, but could deal a death blow to any business in the state still struggling to survive. To shed some light on this legislation and why it's important for the NFIB and its small business members and really all businesses in the state, it's my great privilege and honor to introduce to you the governor of the great state of South Carolina, Henry McMaster. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to be here with all these great South Carolinians, particularly these leaders, including the speaker and the lieutenant governor and others here who worked hard to, to make this bill a reality. Uh, South Carolina never closed during the pandemic. We took a different approach. It's very a careful, methodical approach following the science, but also using common sense. And as a result, while a lot of other states are struggling to get out of get out of the holes they're in, that we are we are ready to blast off. But one thing we wanted to do was to be sure that the lawsuits did would not kill what the virus could not. And that is the reason for this bill is to protect the businesses, large and small from lawsuits that should not be in court. So this is a, another great step forward for South Carolina in this pandemic uh, season that we're in. We are hoping that it is coming to a, an end soon, but uh, everyone needs to know that we are prepared. We are confident in our businesses. We're confident in our assets in our state, and we know that we are going to have a greater prosperity based on what we've done and what we're ready to do in the next 10 years than we've ever had before. So this is another team effort where we communicate, collaborate, and cooperate among chambers of commerce, large businesses, small businesses, uh, hospitals, and of course the state legislature, county council, everyone we had input from all sources across the state, and the result is this today. This is another great step forward for the greatest state in the whole country. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the greatest speaker of the House in the entire United States, and that would be Jay Lucas of Darling. Thank you, Governor. It is, it is indeed an honor to be here to talk about the South Carolina COVID-19 Liability Immunity Act. I know we come to press conferences and talk about these bills, and sometimes they're easy and sometimes they're difficult. This was a bill that we labored under, the Senate labored under. I'm happy that um, I have two of my colleagues in the back, Representative McGarity and Representative Caskey, who played such an integral part in getting this bill out of the House and to the governor's desk. Um, Representative Caskey, in particular, was on the Judiciary Committee that debated and continued to debate this important issue. Um, that involves really the overall recovery strategy of the state of South Carolina. And when I thought about today, what does overall recovery strategy mean? And it's a simple term of how we get citizens back to work in South Carolina. And it's not one piece of legislation. This is an extremely important piece of legislation, but it's the budget that, that we put in to get people back working in South Carolina. It's the executive orders that, that our great governor has 
executed to get people back to work and our it's the knowledge that our lieutenant governor brings of business in South Carolina that got South Carolina up and moving. Now, it wasn't as easy as it sounds, and many of you ask why, and that's because a simple fact. Business wants certainty. Business wants to work. They want to go back to work. They want to know what their taxes are going to be. They're going to, they want to make sure that they have a workforce that they can count on, but most importantly, they want to make sure that they can work in an environment where they don't have to fear frivolous lawsuits when they begin to open their door. And that's the great thing about this act. And if I could boil it down to really the premise, I think, that, that this act is based upon, we in government ask business to continue to operate during the pandemic. Government now has to provide business with reasonable protections for having done so. And I can tell you, after listening to all the stakeholders, the 250 chambers of commerce, the institutions of higher learning who supported this bill, it was really a no-brainer in the end. And I want to give a special shout-out to the Manufacturers Alliance, April Allen and Sarah Hazard, who I will introduce in a moment, who worked so hard with us in getting this bill. Um, this legislation is narrowly tailored. Um, it protects business to the degree that business protects the consumer. Um, we're not awarding poor behavior with a bill like this. This isn't a get out of jail free card. Business doesn't want a get out of jail free card. They want certainty. They want you to provide them with standards that they have to operate under and they assure us that they will meet those standards and we meet those standards. Government has to make the simple promise that you will not be sued, you will not be hailed into court to deal with frivolous lawsuits. So again, this is a great day for opening up South Carolina. I want to again thank our great Governor Henry McMaster and all he's done to pave the way for South Carolina being at the forefront of opening South Carolina. And with all that being said, and um, I did want to point out that Cafe Strudel is one of my and Representative Caskey's favorite places to eat. You can tell that we eat here a lot. <laughs> we like this place. So we like that this place is going to stay open. So I want to introduce Sarah Hazard with the Manufacturers Alliance who really sat down with us the entire way as we crafted this bill. Um, I want Sarah Hazard who sat down with us the entire way as we crafted this bill. And Sarah, thank you for leading the business community to get us to a product that the House could pass and that Senate could pass, which is sometimes a little hard. Sarah Hazard. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sarah Hazard, and I'm President and CEO of the South Carolina Manufacturers Alliance. You know, COVID-19 and the impact it had throughout our state, our nation, and really across the globe is something that none of us had ever experienced. To say that the last year has presented some unprecedented challenges is an understatement. Our entire way of life pivoted almost overnight, but we persevered and we are continuing to make tremendous progress in combating the deadly virus. I am incredibly proud of how Team South Carolina came together and that's what makes our state so great. Manufacturers stepped up to produce PPE products and we never stopped working which helped ensure consumer products remained on our shelves and also helped keep our economy going. Our healthcare heroes never wavered in take caring of the sick. Employers and businesses implemented substantial safety protocols that are essential to stopping the spread of COVID-19. And together, we quickly mobilized vaccine drives in every part of our state, all of which was critically important to getting us back to a normal way of life. You know, as South Carolinians, we have a tenacious spirit that embodies hard work, doing what's right, and coming together in a time of need. We are all in this together, and that is why the COVID-19 Liability Immunity Act is so important. Whether it is a large manufacturing operation, an office setting, a school, or a small business like Cafe Strudel, this restaurant where we are here today, employers must have confidence and certainty 
that if they follow the recommended safety guidelines, they will not be bur burdened by unwarranted legal challenges. This legislation gives employers those protections and certainty they need. I want to thank the coalition of business organizations that came together to support this legislation. It truly was a team effort. And I want to thank the members of the House and Senate who supported this legislation as well. And finally, I want to thank you, Government Master, for signing this really important legislation into law. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce Ben Hohmeyer, who's the Executive Director for the National Federation of Independent Businesses. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, thank you, Governor, Mr. Speaker, Lieutenant Governor Evett, uh, Mr. Kasky, Ms. McGarry, uh, for being here. As, uh, and thank you, Tripp, for having us. Tripp is a, a great member of mine and has been for a very long time. As Sarah mentioned, I'm Ben Homeyer, and I'm the state director for NFIB. We are the largest small business group in the state of South Carolina. Small business owners are resilient, and they have had to be with everything that's been going on. Uh, our leaders have been doing all that they can to keep the 90% of South Carolinians that work in a small business going, uh, having them go to work, and, and keeping them safe and healthy. You know, this legislation, with the full support of Governor McMaster, of Speaker Lucas, of the House and the Senate, you know, provides that protection. And as the, the Speaker said, that certainty that businesses need to go forward and, and to stay open. You know, the, the whole business community really came together. And I want to mention some folks, Sarah and her team, John Wall, who almost ended up with my hairline with all this that was going on. Uh, Rochelle Taylor with the Medical Association, Rebecca Leach with retail, uh, Katie Titus, Swath Patel with the State Chamber, Charleston Laffin with the Poultry Association, uh, I saw John Dworkin with, with Sketa. I mean, this was the whole business community came together and realized that this was such an important issue that we had to get this done. You know, I also need to mention a couple other things that have gone on during this that, that the governor has fully supported that Speaker Lucas and, and the House have, have truly gotten behind. The $920 million that went to the UI Trust Fund to make sure that small business owners like Tripp were not going to be paying double and getting hit twice like happened in 07, 08, 09 when, when things went bad. You know, ensuring that those folks that had to lay off people because of, of COVID weren't going to see a hit to their, to their UI rates is, is massive making sure that the dollars that they received that were coming in were going to be tax deductible. And honestly, I've stolen this line from the governor once before in a, in a speech, the business of South Carolina is business and making sure that businesses could operate by ending the state of emergency as quickly as possible. You know, one last thing that, that helped out that came out of the Accelerate SC program was there was $40 million that went to small businesses specifically in a grant program. You know, in the coming months, we hope that we're going to be able to do more things like that uh, with, with the extra money that's coming. Because South Carolina is lucky, and I'm going to use the word blessed, to have elected officials that realize that the business of South Carolina is business and doing everything that they can to keep those folks in business and going forward is of utmost importance to the state and, and to our local communities. With that, the governor is going to sign 